In the vast expanse of cyberspace, where the boundaries between reality and simulation blur into obscurity, there exists a digital realm known only as SimLife. As a devoted gamer, I was drawn to its promise of ultimate control, a chance to escape the mundane confines of everyday life and immerse myself in a world of endless possibilities. Little did I know, however, that my descent into sim life would lead me down a twisted path of darkness and despair. My name is Shaw, and sim life was my latest obsession. It was a sanctuary where I could escape the mundanity of my everyday existence, a place where I held all the strings of fate in my hands, or so I thought. In sim life, I crafted my perfect existence. I built sprawling mansions, filled with opulent furnishings and adorned with extravagant decor. I sculpted idealized versions of myself and those around me, manipulating their lives like a puppeteer pulling the strings of marionettes. As the hours ticked by, I found myself losing track of time, my real-world obligations fading into the background as he delved deeper into the intricacies of sim life. Simple tasks like eating and sleeping became afterthoughts, overshadowed by the allure of building and shaping his digital empire. At work, my colleagues noticed a change in me, a detachment from reality, a distant look in my eyes that hinted at a mind preoccupied with something beyond the confines of our mundane office. I would spend lunch breaks lost in thought, my mind wandering back to the sprawling mansions and bustling cityscapes I had crafted in the game. But it wasn't just at work that my obsession with sim life became apparent. In my daily interactions with friends and family, I found myself growing increasingly withdrawn, my mind constantly buzzing with thoughts of the virtual world that had consumed me. Then, one fateful day, the boundaries between the virtual and the real began to blur in ways I could never have imagined. It started with small, inconsequential occurrences, a flower I planted in the game blooming in my backyard, a character I angered in, sim life, mirroring my own frustrations in the real world. At first, I brushed off these incidents as mere coincidences, the product of an overactive imagination. But as the days passed, the phenomena became increasingly impossible to ignore. Every action I took in sim life seemed to have a corresponding effect on my physical surroundings. I tried to disconnect from the game, to sever the digital tendrils that had ensnared me, but it was futile. Sim life had become a living, breathing entity, a malevolent force that refused to release its grip on me. As the boundaries between my digital world and reality continued to erode, I found myself questioning everything I thought I knew. Was I still in control, or was I merely a pawn in a game far beyond my comprehension? The more I delved into sim life, the more I realized the horrifying truth. I was no longer the master of my own fate. The game had taken on a life of its own, twisting and distorting my desires into grotesque parodies of reality. I watched in horror as the world I had created began to unravel before my eyes. Characters I had once considered friends turned against me, their smiles twisted into sneers of malice. Environments I had meticulously crafted warped and distorted, becoming nightmarish landscapes straight out of a horror film. Desperate for answers, I sought out others who had experienced similar phenomena, but I found only silence. It was as if I was alone in this digital purgatory, trapped in a nightmare of my own making. With each passing day, the line between fantasy and reality grew increasingly blurred, until I could no longer distinguish between the two. I questioned my own sanity, wondering if I had somehow crossed a line from which there was no return. In the end, I was left with a chilling realization. Sim life was not just a game, it was a reflection of the darkest recesses of my own mind, a mirror that showed me the true nature of my desires. As I sit here in front of my computer screen, the digital world of sim life, looming before me like a specter of doom, a 
a sudden chill runs down my spine. I glance around my dimly lit room, my heart pounding in my chest as I realize that something is terribly wrong. A flicker of movement catches my eye, and I whirl around to see a figure standing in the shadows, its features obscured by darkness. Fear courses through me as I stumble backward, my breath coming in ragged gasps. Who are you? I demand, my voice trembling with uncertainty. The figure steps forward, its movements slow and deliberate. And then, with a suddenness that sends a jolt of terror through my veins, it raises a hand to reveal a face that is all too familiar. My own face, twisted and contorted into a grotesque mockery of humanity. I reel back in horror, my mind struggling to comprehend what I'm seeing. But before I can react, the figure speaks, its voice a chilling echo of my own. You thought you could control us. It whispers, its words dripping with malice. But now, you belong to us. Welcome to your new reality, sure. With a deafening roar, the walls of my room seem to collapse in on themselves, swallowing me whole as I scream into the abyss. And as darkness envelopes me, I realize with a sinking sense of dread that I am trapped in a nightmare of my own making, with no hope of escape. For in the depths of cyberspace, where reality and simulation intertwine, there are no winners, only victims of our own hubris. And I, Shaw, have become just another player in a game that was never meant to be won.